On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, I talk with Chuck Fandos about the future of the industry and what it's like to try and run two businesses. Marketing Joy, which is now available only on Promo Corner, the leader in digital marketing for the promotional products industry. I am your host, Kirby Hossaman, and joining me today is an industry rock star. He's the CEO of Facilis and Gateway CDI, Chuck Fandos. Chuck, thanks so much for taking the time. Sure. Hey, Kirby, how's it going today? It is going fantastic. Always always enjoy get, getting to talk to people like you, so I want to learn some things today. So. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> let's have some fun. Cool, cool. So, Many people in the promotional products industry know that you are the CEO of Facilis, which is a buying group, if I understand right. So one of the things that always I always kind of want to dig into is why did you guys decide to do that? Why did you decide to start it? So first of all, um, Facilis Group is – I really hate the term buying group. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> if I had a gun, I'd shoot you right now, but I, I don't. <laughs> Um, uh, it's, I think it's a lot more than that. It's, uh, it's really three things. It's, it's a group of distributors who come together based on technology, community and supply chain or buying power. Uh, and that's really what we are. So, so the technology and community hold a lot of that together mm -hmm. and the buying power is part of it. But the term buying group to me is a pejorative and, and I don't, uh, I don't really like it, but okay. Sorry. Sorry I, sorry, I hope I wasn't too cruel to chastise yeah. you. There. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. So, to, but, but why did you decide to put the whole group together? So, um, I was the third of three partners in. Mm -hmm. um, I have two partners based in Canada. Dan Rochette um, started Facilis in 2000. Okay. Uh, and he was a distributor in Canada looking for a better way then, you know, one system to do search, one system to do CRM, one system to process orders, mm -hmm. one system to do uh, quotes, one system to do general ledger. And he started this and got a few of his friends on as kind of early adopters or guinea pigs. And that's how Facilis started. Uh, Martin Weber, my other partner, and Dan worked together. Martin joined, I think, in maybe 2003. And then I joined in 2005 when Facilis made the leap from a few companies in Canada into looking at the U.S. market. Okay. No, that's great. So the other thing, I recently read an article that you wrote um, about making the experience of buying promo more simple, which I it really resonated with me. It's something we talk about here at my office a lot. Why do you think it's so hard to look at things from our clients' perspective sometimes? I just think that's the way that we work. And, and I think that uh, clients want to think of us as a commodity, mm. promotional products, because they're on Amazon, they're on websites, and they think that they can find anything on their phone and get a better price. Mm. And we overplay how complicated it is because of the imprint. So we we tend to lead sales pitches with, you can't believe how unbelievably un, uh, complicated what we do is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to project on you how we operate to the customers instead of saying what works for them and what makes sense from our point of view. And that's really the way I tried to write that article. And mm -hmm. I actually got a lot of response mm -hmm. on you know, hey, don't make it complicated. And quite honestly, the customers don't give a shit about distributors' businesses. They want what they want. Exactly. Why don't we deliver it? And let's let's sit on the other side of the table and design our services and products to, to fit their needs, not what works best for us and the different machinations we go through to deliver products. Yeah, it's a great point because one of the things that I struggle with is I think we sometimes operate on our own silo so we know what the terminology is, uh, suppliers, you know, certain pass-through charges and all this stuff that they make sense to us because we live here. But the customers just do this a lot and shake their heads. So I, I really yeah, – I mean I think customers want 
you know what? I'll give you my logo. Give me one price. I don't want a setup charge. I don't yeah. know what a PMS charge or second run charge is or yeah. a less than minimum or, you know, just give me a price. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And, and, and I, I think that we think customers are more price only oriented but I think we confuse them so much that all they understand is price mm. and that's what they fall back to. Yeah, no, because we haven't done a good job of creating value. Um, right. Yeah, so that's a great point. Um, so the other thing I know about you is you're running two different businesses. Um, that's near and dear to my heart because I'm doing something similar. Um, so I understand that's a huge challenge. What advice do you have for keeping up with that? So uh, – the one company I run is the U.S. division of Brand Edition, which acquired Gateway CDI in January of 16. We're a you know distributor based in Europe, Asia, and the U.S. And then obviously Facilis we talked about. Uh, what advice do I have on, on how to run two things? Um, I think you just got to juggle it and you can't over plan and say, I'm going to spend my time 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30. It's, uh, it's how do you handle it day to day? Mm -hmm. And I heard a great quote today. And I think to get through trying leading businesses, you're a, you're a uh, architect in the morning and a bricklayer in the afternoon mm -hmm. that, you know, you can have all these great plans or how things are going to go, but then things get away from you and you got to roll up your sleeves and, and dive in there, but it is hard running a couple of businesses and a couple of growing businesses. And, uh, that, that is a challenge. And there's, unfortunately, there's no great answer, but great teams working with you. And sometimes you just gotta like put in those 10 hours that you don't have to get over the hump. Yeah. I think, you know, it's so funny. What you just said is exactly right. I think sometimes people will ask, well, how do you get this done or how do you get this done? And I think the most underrated thing is I work a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> I put in a lot of time. Like that's, that's, that's part of the deal. So if, if your yard's three times as big as the person next to you, it takes you three times as long to cut it. That's a great, that's a great analogy. <laughs> well, so. cool. Cool. Chuck, you've answered my three questions and I appreciate that. Uh, give everybody the chance to ask me one question. Do you have one for me? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, where'd you get that shirt? <laughs> this this would be a Sandmar piece. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, nice shout out to Sandmar. I uh, know my question would be yeah. that I think that the industry is getting uh, in the process of getting younger and younger, and mm -hmm. and that's um, sales reps. That that's everybody, including customers, and the way that things are done are different and moving more into technology and more into relationships based on social media, Skype things. It, it, so everything's changing. So if we flash forward five years from now, uh, Paul Bellantone and Tim Andrews are both old guys. You know, they're probably going to be gone. Um, <laughs> who, who either who is going to or what's a perfect candidate to run the industry down the road or if you were to run the industry in five years what you know what what would you look to change wow that's a great question okay so first part who should run the industry other than chuck fandos i think chuck would be a great uh, no person. i'm older than both of those guys <laughs> so that's, i'm um, out Okay. Well, the person who pops into my head, and again, I, I tend to give him shout, shout outs all the time, is Mark Graham. I think yeah. Mark is another guy who is uh, very forward thinking and very uh, collaborative. So if I had to pick somebody, it would be him. If it were. You think he, he dresses too casually, <laughs> mostly in t shirts and jeans? So. <laughs> well, I think if you're, talking, <laughs> yeah, if you're talking about a younger group and demo, I don't know about yeah. you, but I'm actually dressing differently than I did five years ago because my customers are dressing differently. Exactly. Um, so what would I do to change? I actually think that one of the things that's gotten better is we have as an industry, it's taken us a little while, but we're getting better at utilizing technology. Um, I think that the technology is going to change, but I think that the basis of creating an amazing customer experience and creating value through relationships is going to stay. It's just a matter of the tools that we use to do it. We, I think we need to be more progressive about being on the forefront of using those tools as opposed to jumping on things after it's been proven. So Yeah, I, I, and, and let's not overcomplicate it because 
people buy from people yes. they like. Yes. Yes. And that's, you know, I, I think that's one of the reasons that we do what we do and you do what you do um, in the sense that I want to give people the opportunity to get to know us through social media, through content at scale. And so I think that that's going to be one of the things that we need to do better as an industry. So, And do you think there's going to continue to be a lot of consolidation on mm -hmm. both supplier and distributor side? Boy, I, again, you might actually have more insight into that than me. But what I would say is I it sure seems like it's not slowing down. So I would think that, yes, it's going to continue. Yeah, I, I think it's going to continue. And I, I really think that we're going to see in three years, five years, a monster distributor supplier company mm -hmm. that's completely vertical with great technology who's going to just go right to market from factory floor uh, with a sales force, without a sales force, mm -hmm. and have all that. I, I think that's a natural progression that somebody in private equity is going to invest enough money to do that, mm -hmm. is my opinion. But I hope I'm wrong, but I think it could happen. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the, that's the uh, certainly the buzz around the industry for sure. So, well, Chuck... Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time. You've done a great job, and uh, we'll have to do it again, okay? Great. Thanks, sir. We have a great day. All right. That wraps up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time.